Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I, um, uh, I did my PhD in the United Kingdom. I also did my master's in the United Kingdom. Um, yeah, so during these years, it has been very interesting, okay, because I've been opportune to have experience both in the clinical settings and currently I'm working as a lecturer. I've been teaching people or going through the likely questions um, for anyone who is interested of getting a job in the UK as a biomedical scientist. And, but it seems like my time is getting choked and I'm not able to do some of those things again. Thinking I need to make videos that could help people to assess them and then help them to, you know, prepare for the interviews. Um, in doing that, I would like to start off by saying that this is actually my first video. So I will first off by saying that um, you need to understand there's a difference between being a biomedical technician or assistant and a biomedical scientist. There is a huge difference. So you need to know that as a biomedical scientist, what that make you a scientist, the key word there is scientist, and the other one is technician. So what that makes you a scientist is that you are able to know the reason behind every action that you are taking. There is a scientific judgment before you are able to take those actions. So that as a scientist, you need to know why and if you are going to increase your chances of getting a job in the UK as a biomedical scientist, you must demonstrate why during your interview. Okay? I'm going to give you a few examples. Let's say you are being given a full block count result that has low platelets or low MCV or high MCV, as the case may be. What are you going to do? What you are going to do is not just what someone has told you. You need to think what is actually going on in the person, in the patient body. What would make the MCV to be high and what does it mean? What, what is MCV and what is the significance of MCV being high? What is the significance of MCV being low? What is the significance of platelet being high or low as the case may be? These are the things you need to know. And these are the things you need to demonstrate to be able to increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. Another example I would like to give is in terms of coagulation, where someone's iron hour is raised, probably 5.0. And when it is 5.0, the policy or the guideline is that you should phone the result. It's an urgent result. Why? So that why is very important. And that is what you need to demonstrate during your interview to increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. You see, this is why some people struggle to get this job. It's not like it's hard. The system is struggling to fill in the space, but you need to demonstrate you are a scientist to increase the chances. So there is a reason why INR is at risk, and that is what you need to know. What is even INR? What effect does it have? What does it show? Okay, let's go to transfusion. We do blood group and antibody screening. Why are we doing antibody screening? Okay, so why are we doing that? And it if you get if the antibody screening is positive, you do antibody panel. Why are you doing antibody panel? What is the significance? What are you gonna do with it? So these are the things you need to know. And how do you even identify these antibodies? And when you identify them, what does it mean when it comes to giving blood to patients? Okay, finally, I will say in the UK, the guideline too is that. Any woman within bearing of age should be given antigen K negative blood. Why? Why not antigen D negative blood? Why not antigen big E negative, small E negative? Why are we so particular about this antigen K negative blood? These are the things that you need to demonstrate during your interview to be able to increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. Now, what I'm going to say is this. I want you to look forward for videos that will be coming out from me so you can subscribe to the channel so that once I upload the videos, you will be able to see it quickly 
So what I'm going to be doing is to be taking each pieces of the questions that you are likely to see, you know, when you go for interview as a biomedical scientist. And when you go through each of those pieces and understand them, I can assure you that when you go for your interview, you will be cruising, okay? And you will increase your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. And of course, if you do have any question of something you want me to address, you can also put a comment and I'll be more than happy to address that. Thank you very much. And please look forward for the videos that I'll be uploading. Thank you.